G'day ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Draw with Jazza. I'm Jazza and in this video we're going to talk about how to turn your art into a business. Now normally on topics like this I tend to just present my thoughts and experience but I have something a little special in store for you. Recently over Skype I interviewed Gary Vaynerchuk and asked him the questions that you guys ask me all the time and I get hundreds of emails every week and most of them are questions to do with how to turn your art into a business. Whether you're a writer, or an animator or illustrator or any other sort of artist taking that step into the unknown from it being a hobby into something you want to make your profession is particularly daunting and sometimes really confusing and frustrating. So before I jump into the content of the interview I quickly want to cover two things and the first is that this video is aimed at the entrepreneurial artist meaning people who want to do their own stuff. Of course there's a lot to be taken from it for those of you who want to get jobs at studios or things like that but really I think when we talk about making your art into a business we're talking about people who want to take their content their medium and make a business for themselves make a name for themselves and build a brand which brings me to my second point and the reason I did this interview with Gary Vaynerchuk Gary V is well known for a lot of different things be it his public speaking his books his entrepreneurial history and experience or his social media prowess and one of the reasons I wanted to do this video and interview with him is because while I feel capable of answering these questions that I get asked a lot uh, to you guys and I do answer them wherever possible I really felt like there's a lot of value to be had in asking an entrepreneur how to be an entrepreneur. Is it just me or is that word really weird? I don't know whether I say entrepreneur or entrepreneur. I mean there's a really weird middle zone. Entrepreneur. So a little bit of background on Gary Vee. For those of you who don't know, he is a very experienced entrepreneur. To give you some context in that regard, Gary Vee, when he graduated college in 1998, took over his dad's wine business and turned it from a $3 million a year turnover to a $50 million a year turnover in the space of seven years. And in that time, increased the profit percentage margin as well. So he has some very practical experience. He is invested in loads of companies and knows how businesses succeed or fail. He's the co-founder and CEO of VaynerMedia, which is a social media focused digital agency. And he's particularly well known for being someone who speaks his mind. And I'm really grateful that he took the time to speak with me. And I'm really hoping you enjoy the content of this interview. And I'm pleased to present to you my discussion with Gary V on how to turn your art into a business. Gary V, the man himself. Thank you so much for taking the time. It's awesome to see you in person and slightly bizarre, I'll be honest. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'm thrilled to be here. My audience in large part really want to make it in the industry as, as an artist or animator, and it can be quite a difficult thing to navigate these days. And I really thought that in speaking to you, I'd be able to, um, get some insight given from someone who's qualified to give it in regards to making it as an artist and getting paid as an artist in a very different and very socially driven world uh, and using the new tools and assets that are available to us. So Real to do it. let's jump into it. These are questions that I get from people quite a lot. How does someone make money off of animations when vlogs and gaming are so much more heavily monetizable? Uh, and does this unbalance mean that animation or things that are quite time consuming to produce will sort of die out or be disadvantaged long term? No, I think I think every market is the same thing, right? Like every genre. And, and I, I come from a, a business background where I consult with a lot of businesses. I've invested in over 200 startups, so I'm very out there. And I will tell you that for anybody who's listening right now. Everybody thinks that their stuff is hardest, right? Like yeah. if I was doing a show now with car salesmen or with juice makers or with, you know, gym providers or everybody thinks that their thing, you know, hey, making sound recordings is tough because now everybody expects you to do it for free. Hey, designing filters for Snapchat. Everybody expects everything for free if they can help it. And that is just actually normal business dynamics, meaning, yeah, gaming is great, like he, you know, the question was mentioned. The problem is, how many people are actually paid to design games? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's you know, every industry's top one, two, three, four, five percent are the people that are are making money and winning. What I would say is this: too many people that are artists um, really have an entitlement issue, and and what I mean by that is they don't want to do things for respect. They are romantic about the thought of like, well, why would you want me to do this? This takes up my time. I have done 
ungodly amounts of things. You know, it's scary for me to think about how much I've done for free, spec, hope, lugging in the hours. See, a salesman, mm-hmm. a salesman realizes 80% of the stuff they do is for free, mm-hmm. hoping to get to that thing, you know? And so I, I would tell you that, you know, look, look what's going on re- right here, right now, right? Obviously, I want to thank you for consuming my content, but here I am. You're a busy man. Getting, that's right. Yeah. I mean, and, and you know, I, you know, it's crazy. I get paid eighty, a hundred thousand dollars to give a speech. Sometimes I do one for free because I think it's worth the exposure. Mm-hmm. And when I was coming up and doing the things I did for a living, I would do them for free all the time. So I, my punchline would be this: recognize that there's always just a few that get paid the big bucks. And what your job is to do is to be smart about what you do for free to give you the best opportunity to be successful. Awesome. Should an artist draw or paint what they want? or should they cater more to a broader audience or other people's interests? I think there's a lot of variables here. Number one, you know, it, that's a very singular question, meaning every person that's listening right now has a different answer for yeah. themselves and they should go with that. Number two, you know, if you're ultra talented, the market will come to you, right? Mm-hmm. I, my whole career have done things that people don't believe in, but I've been right and it's worked out for me and it's been very lucrative. Uh, I think you you probably know this better than I do. The you know the artists that are winning at the highest levels tend to be ones that create genres in themselves or are doing something totally different. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you know at the same token if you've got student loans or or if you you know, want to put food on the table, you know, my answer is normally both. You know, I like practicality with aggressiveness. Um, and so my answer to that question is both. I would do stuff that pays the bills, but I would keep a good allocation of 50% of your time, 40%, 30% of your time where you're 20, where you're still doing stuff for yourself to keep those artistic juices flowing. Mm -hmm. Awesome. This next question, I think also ties in a little bit with what you said, uh, in regards to doing something different, but, um, one I get a lot is how do I get noticed as an artist in a sea of great content that's already out there? You know, my big thing on this, my big thing on this is to actually use the platforms I believe in. Like there was, you know, you look at Sean Doris, right? He makes a lot of money now. He was drawing filters on Snapchat before anybody was doing that. And so I think that one of the great ways to get noticed is to do things on new platforms that have a lot of attention. Mm -hmm. So, you know, How would you have gotten noticed? You did a Facebook fan page five years ago. You know, you did Instagram three years ago. You did Snapchat two years ago. Maybe now it's Musical.ly, maybe it's something else. But my number one rule is to buy a beachfront property before everybody else realizes it's special. So pay attention, artists, to all the platforms that are emerging and try to figure out how to, and again, Musical.ly. How does an artist work on Musical.ly? It's not as easy or as obvious as as, let's say Instagram, but what you could do is you could make music little videos of showing you painting and then people will become curious of what you're actually doing mm-hmm. and then that's linking out to your Tumblr or your Pinterest or your blog or your Shopify or your eBay or however you're selling your product. So, you know, I, I would say the number one way to stand out is to overinvest in platforms that are gaining exposure with people that are still not hit mainstream yet. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Brilliant. Um, Another question that I get a lot is in regards to com- to some people call it creative block, some people call, call it complacency or procrastination, and sometimes it's an excuse, and sometimes it's a legitimate struggle that artists go through. So, yes. wh- what do you think artists could do to rid themselves of that complacency or, or that creative block? And look, block? I, I, you know, I, I'm different than a lot of you guys, but I consider myself a business artist. I produce content at scale through my words, through interviews like this, and and I go into ruts too, where I can't stop saying the same thing, and it like disgusts me because I'm like, oh, that's boring. And like, you know, <laughs> you know, I think I think it comes down to. Um, and so, by the way, that's why I started the Q and A show because mm-hmm. all the Q and As allowed me to start talking about new things because it wasn't coming from the top of my head; it was coming from the audience. Yeah. And so, I, what I would say is, put yourself in a position to extract more creative things from you. Meaning, I started a Q and A podcast to get people asking me business questions, which opened up my world. Maybe you need to move. Maybe mm-hmm. you need to travel. Maybe you need to break up with your boyfriend. Maybe I don't know what you need to do, but. Um, sometimes it takes the structure. The other thing is just perseverance. You just keep chipping away at it. You're gonna have days, weeks, months, and even years uh, of creative issues, and uh, and you've got to just realize it's a marathon, not a sprint. When should I ditch my nine to five and work on art and animation full time and make that my income? That's one I get quite a lot. When you can afford it. Mm-hmm. 
you know, I want to know what you're doing from 5.30 p.m. to 2 in the morning if you want to live your life on your terms. You know, everybody wants to be able to have all this amazingness. You know, there's nothing greater in the mm. world than to be able, you know, in the business world to be able to be on your terms. Mm. You know, you know, don't you think you have to put a crap load of work into that? So, yeah. you know, I would, I would say as soon as you can afford it. And by the way, most people can afford it very early on. You just have to live a very artist lifestyle. Yeah. It comes down to the balance of what you, how you want to live your lifestyle versus how much money you're in taking. But the truth is you can do it very, very, very quickly if you're willing to live on a couch with seven other guys and gals in a studio apartment. I mean, it just comes down to that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's this weird image, I think, that people have in their head of being a working artist and just doing what I want when I want, but it, it's not really how it works. <laughs> I, I think, look, I think, no question, I see it in both angles. I have business people who like to think they're artists and they're just not. Mm -hmm. And there's artists that are just not business people. And what you have to do is you have to figure out your thing. I mean, I know some artists who've brought on business partners and that's helped them. You mm -hmm. know, people that can actually sell their pieces a lot better than the artists can sell their pieces. And so, mm -hmm. you know, I think there's a lot of ways to, to, to go at it. Yeah, I think that's definitely a valid point. Like actually my business has done so much better ever since I've been married because my wife is an amazing business partner and I didn't know that at the time. Go I just figure. fell in love with her first. But yeah, seriously, everything has just been so much better since it's been a team. Yeah, I mean, look, I mean, I can make any artist. I can, I, I'll tell you something so crazy. This is the craziest, one of the craziest statements I've said. I'm surprised I want to say this out loud. I think I can make any single artist I, I, I mean, that's actually crazy. There will be tens of thousands of artists over the next five years who will not make it, give up on the craft, all of which, if I was their business partner, would make millions of dollars. Yeah. So does that mean, in a sense, that it's the the approach it's a combination. the exposure, you gotta, or? Of course. Yeah. Yes. Like, of course. You know, like what art needs to be seen, needs to have the right people see it, needs to build a marketplace. A narrative has to be created about the artist. Mm. This is business. You're in the you're in the art business. Everybody can be an art. I'll do art right now. Here we go. Give me a second. <laughs> oh, this is awesome. This is like drawing with Gary Vee. And you know what? It won't even be the worst thing you've ever seen. So like, look, that's art, right? Like, that is brilliant. I can, <laughs> so I, I can do I can do art, but can I do art business? And I think if I can bring any value to any of you, and I'm very flattered and excited to be on the show, and know a lot of you won't know who I am because you're, we're running in different circles. You know, if you want to be in the art business, you have to wrap your head around that you're in the art business. I mean, you're in the mm -hmm. business, and that means promotion and marketing and sales and a lot of things that cliche stereotype artists don't want to deal with and I respect that. And I'm not so sold they should. There's very few far in between that can actually do both. That's when you start thinking about finding a business partner mm -hmm. and one that you can trust. And it's great when it's your wife or your brother or your sister or your mother, or, yeah. you know, but if it's your best friend for 20 years and or it can be a stranger that it worked out. I mean, obviously, there's trust that needs to happen in a business partnership. But that that's what I would say. Awesome. Should I sell my art and services for cheap to get more buyers or should I have a decent markup to get better sales potential? I think both, you, you ebb and flow. I always go a little bit lower in the beginning. You could always raise your prices. I mean, the truth is, if you're not just in a gallery, you can always drop your prices too. So I would say don't get into any rut one way or the other. If you're actively selling art right now, raise your prices, you know? Mm -hmm. Raise your prices. So just keep raising, supply, supply and demand. demand. Yep, that's it. That's it. Um, what do you think about Patreon and other crowdfunding platforms as far as paying artists? You know, I'm not sure what Patreon is. Um, it's uh, like a Kickstarter idea, but it's sort of a video to video sort of thing, usually aimed at YouTube audiences specifically. Is the question, what do I think about marketplaces that then drive down the is, cost of things? I don't know, like should artists be thinking about crowdfunding their art services or should they? Oh, like be... meaning like, hey, here's what I want to do and then people pay and then, listen, I yeah. think, you know, if you're talking Kickstarter, sure. I just think everybody needs to understand it's not that easy. Mm. You know, everybody thinks so I'm going to put something on Kickstarter. And everybody's going to, you know, fundraise it for me, or I'm going to put my art up and everybody's going to want me to do it. Yeah. The answer is sure. I mean, if you can pre-sell, pre-sell everything and anything, um, just please be aware that just being on these platforms doesn't mean you'll be successful. And what are the ways in which people think it's easy and it's not? Well, everybody just thinks that you go on, I mean, I've lived it with eBay and Kickstarter and, you know, and all these platforms. I mean, you know, even Uber drivers, like, oh, I'm just gonna be an Uber. Like, people just, <laughs> people want to believe 
that hard work is not part of the equation or hard work in something that you're not good at, right? Like for example, you might be the hardest working artist, but you don't wanna put in the hard work in business. I get that, I'm the hardest working businessman ever. I put in zero effort in school and that's why I failed you know, at it. And so um, I think people just assume the platform's gonna take it care of it for me. The internet's gonna do it for me. These are, t- <laughs> these are tools. Will a screwdriver help you with putting up a, a, a picture? Yes, but you have to do it. The tool is good. And that's what these products are, they're tools. Mm-hmm. Well, you mentioned um, school before, just, well, just now, and that, that brings me to another question that, that's here. Essentially, a, a lot of people are asking, should I get a formal education to be a working artist? Should I have a degree to get into the game art industry or concept art? What are your thoughts on that? If you're an entrepreneurial artist, no. If you want to get a job in a company that needs for you to have that degree, yes. I mean, if you want to go work for Nintendo or, or you know, or Riot Games, if that's what they require on their website, then guess what? You need to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, but you definitely don't need it to be an entrepreneurial artist. Brilliant. What place does virtual reality have in the near future, uh, as far as what you can see for artists, and how should we as artists prepare to take advantage of that? You know, yeah, yes, it's coming. You know, three, five, seven, nine, 12 years. Obviously, Pokemon Go has helped people understand that AR is here. Um, so, you know, I, I would say that uh, if you can if you can design and create in three dimensional environments and things of nature, it's coming. But I wouldn't get too hard ahead of that. There's plenty of uh, there's plenty of um, other short term and next three to five year opportunities. Awesome. What matters more to becoming a paid and popular artist, my artwork or my persona as an artist? Your artwork. Mm -hmm. I do think that persona can win at times. um, And I think we see that all the time. Some of the biggest songwriters, even athletes, actors, they're not the best at their craft, but the charisma and the marketing of themselves gives them a lot of opportunity. But, But I don't think anybody who asks that question should focus on the persona. They should focus on the art because a lot more people win that way. The creative matters, you know? What is the best way to actively find clients, big or small? Twitter search and Instagram hashtag search, and then engaging with people, actually talking to people. Brilliant. I didn't want to take up too much of time with plugs because I'm going to do that in in separate cuts. No but worries. I want to thank you so much for your time. And no worries, everyone, uh, go check out Gary's stuff. He's been an immense help to me and, and keep doing what you're doing, Gary. It's awesome you, stuff. Brother. See you later. Take care, mate. Stay well, bye-bye. So that is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I want to take a moment to plug Gary V and thank him for taking the time to do that interview with me. If you like the stuff he said, you're gonna love the other content he puts out there. I'm gonna put links in the description to his social media platforms. I particularly recommend his YouTube channel and to go watch his keynotes and his interviews. They're really interesting. And uh, I first discovered Gary V and started listening to his books in audiobook form, which I found to be really invigorating. And I actually like listening to entrepreneurs ebooks while I work because it tends to get my ideas flowing and keeps me focused and Gary V's have by far been my favorite so I recommend going to Audible or various other websites that sell his audiobooks and checking them out because they're fantastic and I particularly recommend his book Crush It or the hashtag Ask Gary V book. Anyway I hope you found this video helpful thank you so much for watching and until next time I'll see you later. Thanks for watching Make sure to subscribe to my channel for new content every week. If you want to support my work and get some goodies for yourself, head over to my store for archives, ebooks, digital brushes, video courses, and more. If you enjoyed this video, here's a link to another video you might like from this channel. And if you want even more, make sure to check out all my behind the scenes action on my vlog channel, Daily Jazza. Draw with Jazza is proudly sponsored by Adobe. Join the creative cloud today and get loads of incredible creative tools like Photoshop, Animate, Premiere Pro, and other apps for your computer or mobile device. That's it for now. Thanks for joining the arty party and until next time, I'll see you later.